Hi there everyone. Today we're going to talk about two things that you might not necessarily associate with each other. Scuba diving and goats. Now I'm not the biggest expert on scuba diving, but luckily Keith here, when he's not working in the library, in keeping with his James Bond image, is also a man of adventure and quite a scuba diver. I, I don't mind a bit of a dive, yeah. Okay, now there's something when you go scuba diving called dive tables. Mm. What are these, Keith? Well, with these days, most people would use a dive computer on their wrist. But when I very first learned how to dive, you had a set of tables and they would tell you according to how far you dived, what depth you'd been to, for how long, how much nitrogen you had in your bloodstream and therefore how long you had to leave it until the next dive. OK, so you, you use these for safety, basically. How long yeah, can I go under for? How deep right. am I? And things like that. Because if you don't, of course, you can get the bends, which is very bad. That's when nitrogen starts bubbling out in your bloodstream. Now these dive tables, really important, really famous mm. in the world of diving, yeah. they've been around a fair while. Yep, they've been around since the early 20th century. So the first dive tables were produced for the Admiralty about 1909, 1910. And the object we have here is to do with that research. Now, this is where the goats come into play, isn't it? It is, yes, unfortunately. So we've got a situation here now where there's a, there's a small group of experts trying to calculate what was safe, what wasn't safe. Mm. They've got these chambers that can create different pressures. Yep. They're putting goats into these chambers and seeing what happens to them. Yeah. Uh, but then doing some serious scientific analysis of the goat's tissue, right. things like yeah. that. Yeah, so John Scott Haldane is a fellow of the Royal Society and he's very interested in the effects of gases in the bloodstream. He joins forces with A.E. Boycott and G.C.C. Damant, that's Guybon, Chesney, Castell, Damant, right. who is the chief diver of the Royal Navy. Okay. And the three of them produce a paper which in 1909 describes the prevention of illness from compressed gases. Let's open these boxes. Mm. Obviously, they're not going to have goats in them, but... They have bits of goats in them. They do. That's, that's exactly what they've got in them. So here we have many, many, you can see layer after layer of what appear to be basically well, microscope slides. That's exactly what they are. And you can see that they're tissue samples. They've been stained so that you can examine them under the microscope. And these particular ones were donated to the society by the family of Commander Damant. So these are originals uh, from his researches into decompression. So this is the chief diver, one of those mm. three men who was doing this research. Yeah. These are his slides of, well, bits of tissue that have had compression and decompression tests done on them. That's and which right. And which was part of this sort of really important moment when they made these tables. So we have not only the slides, but rather interestingly, a postcard here from the fellow himself. So GSH is John Scott Haldane. So this is a postcard that Haldane has sent to Damon. So you can see there, there's Dumont's address. There's some lovely old stamps. This was sent in 1935. Haldane is there saying, oh, I've thought about what you've said and maybe we need to change these percentages. They're still a good 20 years after their first work. Mm -hmm. They're still talking about it. Testing on animals is such a sensitive subject, Keith, but I guess when you have records and archives as old as yours, you sort of run the full gamut of sort of people's attitudes to this work over the hundreds of years the society's been around. You do, and it's there right from the beginning. Blood transfusion experiments were made between men and animals in the 17th century. By this time, science is getting to be a bit more sincere and kind of more modern, if you like. But still, it's, it's part of the history of science. Personally, I just find them as a, as a piece of dive history, uh, uh, very fascinating things. No, that's one for all the diving buffs like you then. Yeah. What do we call this? Goat, goat testing? What would uh, you? What? It has been called goat bending. Goat bending. Mm -hmm. Because of the bends. Because of the bends. They, they, were, giving, exactly they right. were giving goats the bends. Yeah. Oh. And people too. They did experiment on one or two people as well. So it wasn't just the goats. Okay. Fair is fair. He's saying to Dale, you didn't answer my uh, letter of a couple of weeks back. Hurry up, come on, come on. Exactly right, yeah. It's like when I email you about doing more filming. Well, exactly, yeah, yeah it's exactly the same. It would be useful for me to get someone on the Royal Society Council interested in proposing HG Well. So he, he's not going to let this go. 